So how did you get into poker then? Uh, friends. I had a lot of friends that were playing poker very successful while I was studying. And they always told me, try it out, give it a try because I was working at a cashier in uh, Rewe, it's a supermarket chain. Those your uh, workout shoes? Yeah. Dope. Dope. Epic. Ah, oh, epic. Exactly. I'm still learning. Are you recording? Yep. All the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to do a workout now on the rooftop. Um, mostly body workout. And yeah, getting ready for the Sunday grind with Tim Thompson. You're not doing a workout? <clears throat> no, I'm skipping it today. So Right into the action. Yeah. Took a cold bath today. Some breathing exercises. And now the workout. Then meditation. Going over some hands. Studying a bit. And then jumping into the grind. And I think I will be ideally prepared for crushing. I'll warm them up for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I looked tough. Just 12 minutes, but no break. That's that's what I like about Freeletics. That the workouts don't last so long, but they're very intense. And then afterwards, you also have the afterburn effect. So especially if you want to lose weight, it's pretty good <sighs> because it keeps burning up for a while. And 15 minutes with stretching, 20 minutes. A little bit of post exercise, maybe 25 minutes or oh, cool down. And yeah, we can do several, we can focus on several areas like endurance, cardio, or strength. Then you have more, more strength uh, related exercise like push ups, pull ups, all these sort of things, different variations. Um, so, yeah, I really like it. Sometimes it it hurts and it's painful, but but it's worth it. I think that's the idea preparation for for the grind. I did my fair. Now shake some proteins. So other than obviously clean up, <laughs> what uh, what else do you usually do before? Yeah. Mm. If I have the time, which I usually have, I go for a 45 minute meditation. Sometimes it's very uh, challenging, but I can feel you that my level of patience and level of focus is completely different. Uh, so it's worth it. I encourage everyone to give it a try. If you're already meditating, if you don't, you should go for 10-15 minutes first and then slowly building up. Soon I'm gonna go for one hour and then going through some hands, reviewing a couple of spots, trying to get my mind into poker thinking. And what else? Yeah, now taking a shower, cold shower, meditation. Setting some goals for the grind. Maybe we can do that later when I will review a couple of hands. What I would like to be. What I would like to focus on, what kind of spots, where I think that I'm not doing so well at the moment. Um, okay, so this is your uh, preparation. This is like what you do before every Sunday or every like every game. <laughs> yeah, of course. I don't want to study too hard now. It's more about refreshing and going over a couple of trouble spots. So here there was, for example, a spot uh, one or two weeks ago where I fled a sincere the preflop and. We have a 10 high flop, we have three way that makes things always a little bit more complicated. 
Then the prefab progressor checks to me. I go for bed with top pair, top kicker, pretty standard. And then this guy raises. And yeah, and now I of course call on the flop and then he goes out on the turn. And I would like to look into the strategies which hands he, I'm supposed to go broke with. If ace-10 is even a, a broke hand here. Also what hands my opponent is supposed to be bluffing with. and. Yeah, very often it might look like a very great spot to, to stack off here with not blocking his draws, but very often, especially in multi way, you see that you're supposed to fold a lot of top pairs in, in various spots because ranges are much tighter, because there's another player involved, so he's uh, then, of course, uh, my betting range is stronger, so his raising range is supposed to be stronger, and then the, our general hand strength is supposed to be much tighter that we go broke with. So I want to make sure that I'm not just, okay, yeah, ace-10 is a no-brainer broke. So now I look into a simulation. We have a server where we can run several sims, so I can see what would be the GTO strategy, and then I can decide, okay, is my opponent following GTO or not? Is he even ever having the bluffs he's supposed to have? And then I will come to the conclusion whether it was a good broke or not. And I think from what I can see here is that ace-10 is really really borderline and king 10 is the first hand that i should be folding queen 10 king 10 jack 10 all these hands i'm supposed to fold on the turn against an all-in so yeah that's my preparation and then around one hour i will be start grinding and tim thompson's firing off barrels left and right over here letting her go with the gto music <laughs> Perfect. So how did you get into poker then? Uh, friends. I had a lot of friends that were playing poker very successful while I was studying. And they always told me, try it out, give it a try, because I was working at a cashier in uh, Rewe, it's a supermarket chain. And I had my side job, I was studying, and yeah, they told me, why don't you try out poker? And I was be beating everyone in school, and they told me, yeah, but you need to apply strategies, you need to study the game. I was like, what the fuck, no, I'm crushing everyone in school and during the school breaks. So, um, yeah, I got, I, I got crushed, of course, I, I, I lost a bit of money, and then some point I realized, okay, I gotta take this more serious. And then back then you had charts, you printed out charts and you studied those charts and then you tried to apply it. And the strategies were very simple to make money. But back then it was so way easier um, to at least be profitable, right? To not lose money. Of course, you were still far away to make a living out of it. That takes a couple of years, but you were able to afford here and there a bit of money to, you know, um, go out to, to have a nice dinner and then during the college, my bachelor's, which I finished in Germany, and then I needed to make the decision to either pursue my master or pursue a rather more professional poker career. And that's where I started my master, but then after the first or second semester, I realized, okay, studying is not the thing. I, I was very traditionally raised. So, you know, get your grades straight, get your degree, get your eventually a PhD, get a well-paid, safe job fit into the system, fit into the society. Um, so it was really hard for me. It was really hard for me to let go of this paradigms of these, this belief. But then I left Germany. We moved to, with, with two other poker players, we moved to Brighton in England. And from then on, I just, I, I was fully committed to poker, full out in on poker, no studying, no nothing. Uh, at the beginning it felt super awkward like what I don't need to study I don't have any deadlines you 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 still of course when you study you're on your own but this total freedom of you deciding what you do the entire day it took me a little bit to adjust to get up what there are no appointments there's nothing um, that was I don't know it was exciting but it was also a little bit scary but I, I got my shit together and realized okay now you gotta you gotta plan your days a little bit. You, you're now it's it's all on your own, and that's all what all I ever wanted. I wanted to be responsible for 
my success, but also for my failures. Um, so there was no room to blame someone else, to blame the, the teachers, the professor, the education system or whatever. It's, 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 it was all on me and I kind of liked it. And the longer I took, the more I, I really enjoyed it. And of course, also down swings in poker and it's all on you. Whether you might think it's bad luck, it's down, no, it's all on you because you decided to play poker. Bad IP addresses. Bad IP <laughs> addresses, yeah. Um, so this kind of attitude of whether it's not your mistake or not, but you always have to be responsible to make the best out of it. I really started enjoying it. And I really started seeing the benefits of how it impacted the way I tackled life, the way I tackled poker, the way I tackled business. And yeah, not trying to blame others. Like this playing this blame game is so easy for us. It's so much easier than blaming ourselves. And uh, because I saw it just has so many more benefits. And from then on, started working more serious on Razor Edge. One day moved to Sweden, Stockholm. And then, yeah, I think late 2016, I moved to Vienna. And now we're here. Until today, I've never showed myself on social media or anything. Um, because I also think that the content should speak for yourself. Um, what you do, your actions determine who you are. And so for me, it was never that important to put myself out there. But now we have reached a, a magnitude where I felt like, well, I realized I, the, 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 the things we teach, it impacts lives and we can make an impact. 